Hello and welcome. This is Dynasty Whiskers from Whiskers Educational Materials. That's BEMonline.net. Today we will take a look at scaling muscles and their relationship with the uh, brachial plexus. So brachial plexus is basically sandwiched right in between anterior scalene muscle and middle scalene muscle, as we can see right here. That's anterior scalene, that's middle scalene, and brachial plexus passing right underneath anterior and right in front of middle scalene muscle. You have probably already seen this image. This comes from Gray's Anatomy. Uh, here we can see brachial plexus right in the middle of the picture. There's a small percentage of population that will actually have brachial plexus running right through, right through middle scaling. These unlucky ones will experience constant numbness tingling down the arms into the fingers. Let's take a look at another image. Uh, this is again from Gray's Anatomy. Again, here we can see anterior scaly muscle right in front of brachial plexus and scalaneus medius right behind it. And we can see that uh, both of them sandwich the uh, brachial plexus coming right in between. So what is brachial plexus? Brachial plexus is basically nerve supply to your whole upper limb. That's uh, motor function as well as the uh, sensory function. Now people with tight scalene muscles can develop a condition that's called thoracic outlet syndrome. Now this is a condition where brachial plexus that is going right in between anterior scalene and middle scalene muscle will be mechanically compressed by a contractile force of both of these muscles. Thoracic outlet syndrome. Now where would this tightness come from? So first of all, scalene muscles are one of the uh, respiratory accessory muscles. So that means that they will be involved in uh, assisted breath in. People that are mostly chest breathers will usually have tight scaly muscles as well as other muscles that will elevate the ribs as we breathe in. So chest breathers. Other very common causes for scaly muscle tightness would be poor ergonomics of workstation, for example, overuse syndrome, some sort of repetitive motion again and again all day long, or ergonomics at work, overuse syndrome, repetitive stress. Repetitive stress, for example, uh, some type of movement that you would do again and again all day long. For example, bank tellers. Uh, they always have to move side to side. Uh, they would do a little bit of their computer work, uh, look at the screen, and they would tilt the head towards towards the screen, and then they go back to the client, uh, interact a bit, and then they go back to the screen, and they go back and forth, back and forth all day long. So they will be tilting their head towards one side, tilt, tilting the head towards the other side again and again. That is repetitive, repetitive motion, repetitive type of stress on the. Uh, lateral neck muscles. Of course, some type of injury, let's say whiplash, that's a super common one. So that's usually motor vehicle accidents. But not exclusively, there are all different kinds of sports injuries uh, that could involve uh, concussions, uh, whiplash injuries, so any of that. And another one would be prolonged stress, prolonged anxiety issues. Uh, that will always cause upper chest muscles to tighten up. Uh, people will usually uh, breathe uh, using their chest muscles instead of using their abdomen muscles and diaphragm. So anxiety and stress. And of course, previously mentioned traffic outlet syndrome. So there are a few causes for thoracic outlet syndrome. Scaly muscle tightness being one of them. This one is another great image. Uh, this one is from Frank Netter. That's his signature in the corner. And here again, we can see brachial plexus running right below clavicle between scaly muscles. Let's zoom in a bit. So right there, we're looking at the uh, brachial plexus. Now thoracic outlet syndrome, T-O-S in short, usually is caused by tight scaling muscles. 
mechanical compression by overlying clavicle. And as well, no, this one is super rare, but some people will actually have extra cervical rib that again may mechanically compress underlying brachial plexus. As we can see, tight scalene muscles are definitely on top of the list. And tight scalene muscles will be involved in another condition which is called upper crust syndrome. Upper crust syndrome is basically a muscle imbalance between tight and weak structures in the neck region. We'll discuss this in another lecture. Thank you for watching this. If you found this useful, please subscribe, share, like, and be like. Thank you.